Hello and welcome to this video on time series forecasting, where we will be taking a look at the vector autoregressive moving average and vector autoregressive moving average with exogenous variable. The two models that are uh, slightly advanced as far as uh, forecasting is concerned. So we'll stick to the same example that we had considered when we took a look at the VAR model vector autoregressive, which was a generalization of your autoregressive model. So we said uh, that the price or the, the stock price of a certain jewelry and luxury goods maker given by J is not only dependent on uh, the previous value of your uh, J itself, your stock price at a time T minus one, we had a coefficient for this, right? And uh, we had used C11 to be precise. We said it is, also, it is also dependent on another variable, okay? Which happens to be the price of gold at time T minus one. Assuming that the jewelry is strongly dependent on the gold prices, right? The prices of the jewelry. And uh, therefore, as the market fluctuates uh, with respect to the gold commodity, we are talking about the stock price here also being affected. So this was our vector autoregressive model. Likewise, we said, we may have another value for your G at time T as well. In any case, if we were to take a look at the vector moving average as an extension of, or uh, let's say a generalization of the moving average model, we basically have J at time T given by, let's say theta one one multiplied by the error of j at uh, t minus 1 plus theta 1, 2 given as a coefficient for your error of the gold price at t minus 1. A function of the errors that is obtained by our moving averages, that would be your uh, vector moving average forecast for time t. Now, if we were to combine these two models, and uh, that's essentially what we would be doing in, in terms of uh, utilizing this in Python, okay? Because Varma will have, AR has a coefficient P, which is the number of flags. Your moving average has coefficient Q, which is your uh, number of terms for the moving average. So Varma will have these terms P and Q. And uh, we have a combination of your VAR model, GT minus one, plus we could say your uh, VMA model or vector moving average model, eta one, two, epsilon G, T minus one. To be clear, this is what we have here. Theta one two epsilon times g of t minus one, right? So now to try and understand if we had the uh, apart from these two factors. That, that is to say, the stock price of the jewelry maker, the past observations of that stock price, and the idea that your gold price is also impacting it. Let's say there is an external factor which is not directly in the, uh, in the scheme of things, which is to say, we are talking about uh, prices of silver. Right, or for that matter, prices of diamond. 
if these prices are in some way impacting your jewelry price, right? We may not be able to immediately explain uh, in, in terms of the impact that uh, whether it's going to be a positive or negative impact, but you do understand as an external factor, okay, as prices of silver vary as a commodity, people may prefer gold more or less, and they, that may impact your uh, jewelry stock price, okay, in, in terms of how it impacts the business. So in this case, the price of silver becomes an exogenous variable, right? which we can express as a, a series. And uh, in terms of your Varmax model, which is incorporating the price of silver, you'd of course have the order of your, uh, say order is equal to, in this case, we had a, you know, a P value of one for your uh, VAR, vector autoregressive and Q value of one as well for vector moving average. To this, we are adding an exogenous variable given by exog, right? Apologies for this. Uh, all right. Exog would be given by our series. Let's say we had defined it as, uh, for silver, we had defined it say as S underscore exogens, right? So we assign that those set of variables over here and uh, thereby compute our forecast value for Valmax. It may be a little far-fetched, but we may also say, talk about uh, a certain gold mine that is newly discovered, say, in South Africa. And uh, as they are increasingly trying to understand what would be the impact of the price based on this new mine, probably as you go further and further in uh, the following time periods, you might find the probability of finding a certain quantity from that mine or recovering a certain amount of gold that might vary. So that probability is going to be your exogenous variable for this Varmax model. 